When I worked in the White House for George Bush, he was very focused on the threat of uh, the, one of the bird flus. And we would go in on Saturdays and drill. And I tried to get out of it one day. And um, the, the staff at the CDC and the staff of Tony Fauci said the single most important aspect of what we're practicing is public communication, which you just articulated. You said people are done with this. How much do you attribute to the fact that we have a president that is still in denial of the simple interventions, mask wearing, social distancing and the basic threat that it poses? Well, I think it surely is an important part of it, but I also have to give us a sense of reality. Look at Europe right now. Yesterday was the first day since April where there were more cases per population in Europe than there were in the United States. Now, remember, this is an area that had done such a good job of driving the case numbers down by these forced distancing activities, uh, you know, helping to reduce large crowds and so forth. And they did that right through the end of August. And then all of a sudden they let the break up quickly and you saw what happened. It came back uh, in a large way. So I think this is not just a U.S. issue. It's an international issue. But nonetheless, U.S. leadership here for our own public is critical. And right now, the message that the people are getting is very, very mixed. One day they hear that, oh, you should just let it run wild to develop this concept of herd immunity. And the next day they hear, no, 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 you don't want that. What we, if we had a national leadership that was bipartisan, that was scientists and politicians and the media all together, I think we could do much, much more to help the public understand this. Right now they're confused, and in part that makes it easier for them than to say, well, I'm doing everything I'm told to do, so I'm fine, when it's not. You mentioned herd immunity. I mean, that was in the news and communicated because the White House embraced this doctrine of no more shutdowns, uh, but to let the virus run rampant through 60 to 80 percent of the population. What would that look like? Millions of deaths, many, many cases, an economy that would collapse. Uh, you know, it would be horrible. And I mean, I, I would consider it immoral. And from a scientific standpoint, it has the value of pixie dust. And so, uh, you know, the public has to understand that nobody's trying to restrict them from a human rights standpoint or from some, for some reason trying to impact on their lives, uh, you know, in, in a social way. This is all about a virus. This is all about trying to keep people alive. This is about trying to save their loved ones. And that's a message we have to get across. And right now, I mean, you know it, you see it in the media, how the public health community has become a whipping post for people who believe that this is all about politics, and it's not. And, you know, I can't tell you how many people I've had say to me, I didn't believe this situation was real. I thought this was all hype. You know, you scare the hell out of me. I don't want to listen to you. But guess what? My mom just died, and I now get it. And I think that's what we don't want to have happen. And that's why if we could get the messaging together, help people understand that there are solutions. There's ways we can reduce the risk of this transmission, but it's going to take us all to come together to do it. That's where I wish FDR, Winston Churchill were here right now, and all of us had to sit by the fireside <laughs> each night to listen about what we could do, because we could do so much more. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.